Most people have met a Jehovah's Witness at some point. When they'll knock on your door, hand you uh, Bible literature, and they'll, and they'll tell you about what they call the truth. There have been some famous witnesses, informal witnesses, and they've been picked on by comedians. Uh, hi, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> but what do you really know about them? Who is it? <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, ma'am. I'm from Jehovah's Witnesses. And... I'm Trey Bundy. I'm an investigative reporter, and I've been looking into the Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah is a Latin translation of one of the names of God from the Old Testament. Religiously observant Jews won't even say the word out loud. That's what the Monty Python skit is about. Look, I don't think it ought to be blasphemy. Just saying Jehovah. <laughs> The Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the earth is going to end, and it's going to end soon. They started predicting this more than a century ago. Initially, 1914 was going to roll around, and that was going to mark the beginning of Armageddon. Uh, when World War I broke out, they interpreted that as the beginning of the end of the world. The world didn't end. Then they predicted Armageddon for 1975, but again, the world didn't end. So at this point, they're basically saying the end is imminent. When Armageddon comes, 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses are going to be chosen to go to heaven. It's from Revelations, 12,000 people from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. They're going to live up there with Jesus. The rest of the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to survive Armageddon, and they're going to live in essentially paradise on earth. Everyone who does not follow Jehovah is going to perish horribly. Once the smoke clears from that debacle, it looks uh, very much like the Shire or a golf course. Basically, earth is well manicured, flowers blooming, people and animals sort of living in harmony together. These beliefs are based largely on the teachings of Charles Taze Russell. He founded the Jehovah's Witness movement in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the 1870s. They weren't originally called the Jehovah's Witnesses, they were simply the Bible students. Russell wasn't ordained as a priest, but he was a prolific writer of books and pamphlets, all self-published through Zion's Watchtower and Tract Society. They were on a mission to get their word out any way they could. The Witnesses founded a non-commercial radio station in New York City, WBBR, to broadcast sermons, and they made a religious film with synchronized sound, 10 years before Hollywood released its first commercial talkie. As the inspired word of God. They also had custom-rigged sound cars with speakers on the roofs and portable record players they would bring door to door. They built a worldwide religious movement with more than 8 million baptized witnesses. Because they say they can't confirm when Jesus was actually born, they don't celebrate Christmas. Because they believe that the government is controlled by Satan, they don't join the military or salute the flag. They don't accept blood transfusions, they don't celebrate birthdays. They don't consider themselves part of the world. And yet the Watchtower organization has accumulated a lot of real estate. They set up their worldwide headquarters in Brooklyn, New York in 1908, and that real estate value has skyrocketed. They recently sold five of their Brooklyn properties for more than $350 million. And what they're actually doing is they're moving their headquarters to upstate New York to a town called Warwick, uh, where they're in the process right now of building a compound. And they're still going door to door teaching their version of the Bible because that's how they interpret the New Testament. When he sent out his early disciples, Jesus directed them to go to the homes of the people. 